Today, I want to share with you my five tips to help you take better photographs of your flower arrangements. Hello friends, my name is Kathleen and welcome to my YouTube channel. You are in the perfect place if you are a floral designer or a flower lover and you are looking to turn your passion into profits. We talk all about marketing, money, and managing your mindset specifically for florists who are looking to build a business. And my friend, today I wanted to pass along five tips to help you take better pictures of your flower arrangements. And I used to struggle so much when it came to photography. And I was always like, how is it that everybody else fills their Instagram feed with all these perfectly quaffed photos and I'm left going like, it don't look so good, people. You probably already know, which is why you're watching this video, that photography is an integral part of our marketing. You being able to take photographs of your designs and of your work is how you get to ask more customers to create more of those specific designs. But remember that photography is a skill and it takes a huge amount of practice. And one of the things I love is this idea of intentional practice. You set aside a very small amount of time, you put in some groovy music, grab a cup of tea, light a candle, get some flowers, and you make something. But you make something with a very clear intention and then you document what you learned. I have put together a super helpful worksheet so that you will make it more of a regular practice to have an intentional practice. You can download the worksheet at forflorist.com backslash all the things. I have put the link in the description below so you can just click on it, put in your email address, and you'll get access to my intentional worksheet plus 20 other tools and resources that are so incredibly helpful. So my friends, enough jibber jabber, let's get into the teaching. Tip number one, give some consideration to the background. Flowers are a very intricate subject matter to photograph. So it's always better to err on the direction of less is more, particularly when it comes to your background so that the eye is drawn in to the flowers. If you have a lot of stuff going on in the background, if it's a really textural and interesting wall, it's going to distract from the flower arrangement. So if you're the kind of designer who really likes minimalism and really likes simplicity, remember to consider that in your backgrounds. In addition, thinking about the background also comes in conjunction with thinking about the composition. Put some thought into where you're going to use these photos so that you know if you need to make space for a headline or you need to have a specific vertical composition or a horizontal composition or cropped to be square, that you've thought about that ahead of time. So that you're not trying to force fit an arrangement into a specific situation from a marketing point of view and you're like, this is not gonna work. I so wish that I had this picture in a horizontal or a vertical format. If in doubt, take both the vertical and the horizontal composition so that you've got all of your bases covered. Tip number two. Lighting is so important. And in actual fact, the art of photography is all about capturing the light. The single best way to get better photographs of your flowers is to use 100% natural light, but indirect light. So that means that you're in the shade. If you're in a really well lit space and you can just purely use indirect light, your photos are going to turn out better. Anytime you're thinking about taking photos of your work, try and go outside into a shaded area. And this whole idea around capturing the light is also why it can be really challenging to rely on wedding or event photographers to capture beautiful pictures of your table arrangements because sometimes their shot list is so long and the timing in terms of the reception or the ceremony doesn't necessarily allow for them to wait for when the light is at its best. If you really want photos of your arrangements in situ at the venue or on location, whatever it is that you're up to, then it's up to you to make sure that you have time to make that happen. Tip number three, if you have a shop or if you have a home-based studio, set up a corner of your space that is surrounded by natural light, that it's filled with natural light, 
and set it up so it's a permanent structure or a semi-permanent structure in your space. And then you can take pictures of your arrangements in a really familiar, really well-crafted space. You don't even need to worry about taking pictures of your work. Once you get to the location, you'll save yourself the stress, save yourself the headache, save yourself the heartbreak from trying to get the right photo in situ when there's 8,000 other things going on. So I highly recommend that you actually set up a little space in your studio and it does not need to be fancy. Tip number four. Photographing flower arrangements is very similar to photographing food. And most of the time, food is best photographed at one of three different angles. Either straight on, so the camera is at exactly the same height and the same angle as the arrangement, or directly from above, or at the 45 degree angle. Those are my three go-to angles, and sometimes you can play around with like, are you on this side, or are you on this side of the arrangement? Totally depending on where the light's coming from and what looks good in camera. So remember, if you ever need a default angle with which to shoot from, straight on, directly from above, or at 45 degrees. Depending on your aesthetic and your design style, the angle that looks best for your arrangements is totally gonna depend. So again, play around with it and see what you like. And tip number five, and this is probably one of my most favorites, even though all of them are my favorites, but my most favorite of my most favorites, is don't hesitate to actually add a little bit of a wedge or a little bit of a prop underneath the back of one of your arrangements. This is particularly helpful if you're using a container that is not anything that's particularly lovely or glamorous and you really want the emphasis to go on the flowers. This little trick of being able to actually tilt up the back of your arrangement and then if you shoot from front on or you shoot from a 45 degree angle is going to really trick the camera lens and really draw the viewer's eye into the flowers. It changes the proportion, it changes the ratio of the flowers as compared to the vase, and it's all mathematics and lighting, but definitely play around with it. Okay, friends, so five tips to help you take better pictures of your flower arrangements. So whether you're setting up your online catalog, whether you're looking for content for your Instagram feed, whatever you're doing in terms of marketing your work to attract better customers, getting up to speed and really conquering the world of photography is so helpful. It opens up so many opportunities for you to be able to build your portfolio and for you to be able to showcase your work and attract even more customers to your business. And don't forget, if you want to get access to my free intentional practice worksheet, all you need to do is visit fourflorist.com backslash all the things and you'll get access to more than 20 free templates and resources. I have my free pricing guide in there, but just as valuable is my intentional practice worksheet. So click the link in the description below and you can get immediate access to all of the good things. And friends, put these tips into practice and you'll blow your mind at how much your own photography skills can improve. And remember, if you know anybody who could benefit from watching this video, definitely share this video with them. My friends, I hope that this little training and these five tips have been helpful. I hope you have a beautiful week and I'll talk to you again next week. Bye for now.